In this video, we're going to focus on hyperbolas. Now, you may want to get a sheet of paper and a pen to write down some notes. So we have a horizontal hyperbola on the left and a vertical hyperbola on the right. The formula that corresponds to the horizontal hyperbola is x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared, which is equal to 1. This is the case when the hyperbola is centered at the origin. A is the distance between the center of the hyperbola and the vertex. So to get the two vertices, the coordinates are plus or minus a comma zero for this type of hyperbola. And the same is true for the other one. A is the distance between the vertex and the center of the hyperbola. Now the equation that corresponds to the vertical hyperbola is as follows. It's y squared over a squared minus x squared over b squared, which equals one. So when a squared is under x squared, it's gonna open left and right. Or when there's a positive sign in front of x squared. When there's a positive sign in front of y squared, it opens up and down. And a squared is always under the positive term. B squared is under the negative term. Now the coordinates for the vertices for the vertical hyperbola are zero comma plus or minus a. The coordinates for the foci are plus or minus c comma zero on the left and for the hyperbola on the right, it's zero comma plus or minus c. The hyperbola, I mean the foci, is always located towards where the hyperbola opens up. And it's C units away from the center. Now the equation that correlates A, B, and C for the hyperbola is c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. In contrast, for ellipses, the equation is different. c squared is equal to a squared minus b squared. For an ellipse, a is always larger than b. But for hyperbolas, a may be larger than b, and sometimes b may be larger than a. So the relative sizes of those two are not important. They are important for ellipses, but not for hyperbolas. So make sure you're aware of that key difference. And we'll go over plenty of examples so you'll see this in action. Now the next thing you need to be familiar with is the transverse axis. The transverse axis is a line segment that connects the two vertices together. So the length of the transverse axis is 2a. Here we have a vertical transverse axis, and here on the left is a horizontal transverse axis. The distance between the foci, or the two focal points, is always going to be 2c. But the length of the transverse axis will be 2a. Now let's talk about the equation of the asymptotes. For the horizontal hyperbola, it's y is equal to plus or minus b over a times x. For the vertical hyperbola, it's y is equal to plus or minus a over b times x. And this is true when the hyperbola is centered at the origin. The equation is different if the center is not at the origin, and we'll talk about that later in the video. Number one, graph the hyperbola Identify the coordinates of the center, vertices, and foci, and then write the equations of the asymptotes. So what's the value of a squared and b squared in this problem? a squared is going to be under the variable that has a positive coefficient. The one of the negative sign is going to be associated with b squared. So in this problem, a squared is the number under x squared. a squared is 4. 
a is going to be the square root of 4, which is 2. b squared is equal to 9. And b is going to be the square root of 9, which is 3. So with this information, we can go ahead and draw a graph. By the way, the center is going to be the origin for this particular problem. So a is 2, and it's under x squared. So what we're going to do is we're going to travel two units to the right from the center and two units to the left. Let's put some marks on this graph first. So two units to the right and then two units to the left. Now, b is 3, and it's under y. So we're going to go up three units along the y-axis from the center, and then down three units. Then what we're going to do is we're going to create a rectangle around these four points. The purpose of the rectangle is to help us to draw the asymptotes. The asymptotes will be diagonals that will go right through the center of the box. So those are the two, that, the two asymptotes. And what we have here represents the vertices of the hyperbola. So whenever you have a positive x squared term, the hyperbola is going to open towards the left and towards the right. So it's going to look something like this. And then it's going to follow the asymptote. It's curved by the vertices, but once it follows the asymptote, it becomes almost linear. So that's how we can graph the hyperbola to the best of our ability. So it's initially curved and then it becomes linear as it approaches the asymptotes. Now, let's write the coordinates of the vertices. So the vertices is going to be plus or minus a comma zero for this type of graph. And a is 2, so it's plus or minus 2 comma 0. So this one here is at 2 comma 0, and this one here is negative 2, 0. So those are the coordinates of the vertices. Now let's focus on the coordinates of the foci. This is going to be plus or minus c comma 0. So we need to calculate the value of c. And we could use this formula to achieve it c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. a squared is 4, b squared is 9, so c squared is 13, which means c is equal to the square root of 13. So the coordinates of the foci is going to be plus or minus root 13, comma, 0. The square root of 13 as a decimal value is approximately 3.6. So we have a focus there and a focus here. So those are the two focal points of the hyperbola. As you can see, the hyperbola always opens towards the focal points. Now let's write the equations of the asymptotes. Now when you have an asymptote centered at the origin, and if it opens to the right and to the left, the equation is going to be y is equal to plus or minus b over a times x. This value in front of x is the slope. It's rise over run. Going from the origin to this point, we have a rise of 3, that's our b value, and a run of a. So the slope is rise over run, b over a. So that can help you determine if it's b over a or 
A over B, if you ever forget. So B is 3, A is 2. So Y is equal to plus or minus 3 over 2X. Now there's two equations for the two asymptotes that we have here. The one on the right, this is going to be Y is equal to positive 3 over 2X. As for the one on the left, this is Y is equal to negative 3 over 2x. And it makes sense because this line here, the slope is positive because it's increasing as you move to the right. As for the other line, the slope is negative because it's decreasing as you move to the right. So those are the two equations that correspond to the two asymptotes that we have in this graph. And the asymptotes are linear, which means that the hyperbola becomes linear as x increases. Near the vertices, it's kind of curved, but as x gets larger and it approaches the asymptote, it becomes, it behaves like a linear function. Now let's work on a similar problem. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to graph the hyperbola, identify the coordinates of the center of vertices and the foci, and then we're going to write the equations of the asymptotes. Right now, this hyperbola is not in standard form. We need this number to be a 1. So what we're going to do is we're going to divide everything by 144. 144 divided by 9 is 16. So we're going to get y squared over 16. 144 divided by 16 is 9. So we're going to get x squared over 9. And 144 divided by itself is 1. So I'm just going to rewrite this here. So now that our equation is in standard form, we can go ahead and find the details that we need. So what's a squared and what's b squared in this equation? a squared is always going to be the one that has the positive coefficient. So a squared is going to be 16. So that means that a is the square root of 16, which is 4. b squared is 9. b is going to be the square root of 9, which is 3. So now let's calculate c. c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. a squared is 16. b squared is 9. 16 plus 9 is 25. And the square root of 25 is 5. Now let's go ahead and draw a rough sketch of this graph. Now, since y squared is listed first, this is going to be a vertical hyperbola. So we're going to travel a units along the y-axis, since a squared is under y squared, and then a units down from the center. So just like before, the center is going to be the origin. It's 0, comma 0. b squared is under x squared, and since b is 3, we're going to travel 3 units to the left and to the right along the x-axis. Now, let's create our rectangle. And then, let's draw the asymptotes, which is going to go from one side of the rectangle through the center to the other side. Now the coordinates of the vertices, it's going to be 0 plus or minus a. And a is 4, so it's 0 plus or minus 4. Here's the first vertex at 0 comma 4. And here's the second vertex at 0, negative 4. And so the graph is going to look like this. So that's how we can graph this particular hyperbola. So now that we have the coordinates of the vertices and the center, we need to find the coordinates of the foci. 
So it's going to be 0, comma, plus or minus c, and c is 5. So at 0, 5, and at 0, negative 5, we have two focal points. So that's the coordinates for the foci. Now the last thing we need to do is write the equations of the asymptotes. So it's going to be y is equal to plus or minus the slope times x. The slope is going to be rise over run. So the rise is a units. The run is b units. So rise over run is going to be a over b. a is 4, b is 3, and so it's going to be y is equal to plus or minus 4 over 3x. So that's how we can graph the hyperbola, identify the coordinates of the center, vertices, and foci, and that's how we can write the equations of the asymptotes for this particular equation. Now let's write down some more notes. So let's focus on the horizontal hyperbola first. When this hyperbola is centered at the origin, the equation that correlates to it is x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared. But what happens if the center is not at the origin? Let's say it's at some point h comma k. The equation changes to this. It becomes x minus h squared over a squared minus y minus k squared over b squared is equal to 1. So you may want to write some notes down. Even if you don't know how to apply it, you may just want to jot these down and then use it later for reference. Now the next thing that we mentioned is that the vertices for horizontal hyperbola centered at the origin is plus or minus a comma 0. When it's not centered at the origin, it's going to change. All we need to do is add the center to, this, to those coordinates. So we're going to add h to plus or minus k, I mean plus or minus a rather. So it's h plus or minus a, and then we're going to add 0 with k. So it just becomes k. So that's how you can write the new vertices. Simply add the center to the vertices, and then you get the the new vertices when the center is not at the origin. The coordinates of the foci is plus or minus c comma zero. So when it's shifted and the center is not, the, not at the origin, simply add h and k to this. So it becomes h plus or minus c comma k. Now the equation of the asymptotes is plus or minus b over a times x. When the graph is shifted, this becomes y minus k is equal to plus or minus b over a times x minus h. So that's how the equations will shift when the center moves from the origin to some point h comma k. Now what if we have the vertical asymptote? How will the equations change? So first, let's write the equations when it's centered at the origin. So for this one, it's going to be y squared over a squared minus x squared over b squared. And when the center shifts from the origin to h comma k, the equation will be adjusted. So it's going to be y minus k squared over a squared minus x minus h squared over b squared, which equals 1. The vertices will be 0, comma, plus or minus a. The new vertices, all we're going to do is add the center to this. So it becomes h, comma, k, plus or minus a. The foci will be 0, plus or minus c. The new coordinates of the foci will be h, comma, k, plus or minus c. The equation for the asymptotes will be plus or minus a over b x 
but the new equation becomes y minus k is equal to plus or minus a over b x minus h. So feel free to write those equations. This equation remains the same. c squared is equal to a squared over b squared in all cases. Number three, graph the hyperbola. So we're going to follow the same instructions that we did for the first two problems. But this time we can see that it's not centered at the origin. So let's begin by finding the center. Here we have x minus 3. We're going to change negative 3 to positive 3. And here we have y plus 2. We're going to change positive 2 to negative 3. So the coordinates of the center are 3, negative 2. a squared is typically the first number that we see here. a squared is 4, so a is going to be 2. b squared is 9, so b is going to be 3. Next, we need to calculate c. a squared is 4, b squared is 9, 4 plus 9 is 13, so c is going to be the square root of 13. Now, let's go ahead and graph the hyperbola. So let's begin by plotting the center, which is at 3, negative 2. Now, a is 2. a is associated with the x variable. So we're going to travel two units to the right, parallel to the x-axis, and two units to the left. b is 3. b is, b squared was under y squared, so it's associated with y. So we're going to go three units up, parallel to the y-axis, and three units down from the center parallel to the y-axis. Now let's draw a rectangle. And then let's draw the asymptotes. Now this particular hyperbola, will it open to the left and right or will it open up and down? Do we have a horizontal hyperbola or would you say we have a, a vertical hyperbola? Now we have a positive sign in front of x squared. So this is going to open left and right. If y squared was positive, it would open up and down. So the graph is going to look something like this. So these two points represent the vertices of the hyperbola. And if you recall, the vertices for a horizontal hyperbola that is not centered at the origin is going to be h plus or minus a comma k. h is 3, a is 2, and k is negative 2. So you can always look at the center to find h and k. So first we have 3 plus 2 which is 5 comma negative 2. So that's the vertex on the right side. For this one it's going to be 3 minus 2 comma negative 2. 3 minus 2 is 1 and so we get the point 1 negative 2 for this vertex on the left. So those are the coordinates of the vertices. Now let's find the coordinates of the foci. So it's going to be h plus or minus c comma k. h is 3, c is the square root of 13, k is negative 2. So this represents the coordinates of the foci. Now, to get the x value of the foci, we have 3 plus the square root of 13. The square root of 13 is 3.6, so 3 plus 3.6, 
is 6.6. .6. So somewhere in this region, we have the focus. And then 3 minus the square root of 13, which is negative 0.6. So somewhere in this region is the other focal point. So that's the location of the foci on the graph. The last thing we need to do is write the equations of the asymptotes. So it's going to be y minus k is equal to plus or minus. Now, the rise is b units, the run is a. So the slope is going to be b over a, and then it's x minus h. So k is negative 2. y minus negative 2 becomes y plus 2. So what we have here is similar to the original equation. This is going to be equal to plus or minus b over a, b is 3, a is 2, and then x minus h. So we have x minus 3. So this represents the equations of the two asymptotes. Now let's work on another problem. So we're going to do what we did in the last problem. We're going to graph the hyperbola, identify the coordinates of the center, vertices, and foci. We're going to write the equations of the asymptotes, but this time we're also going to determine the domain and range of the graph. So what's a squared and what's b squared? a squared is usually the number in front. So a squared is going to be 9, which means a is the square root of 9, which is 3. b squared is going to be the other one, 16. b, the square root of 16, is 4. Now let's calculate c. c squared is a squared plus b squared. a squared is 9, b squared is 16. 9 plus 16 is 25, and the square root of 25 is 5. Now let's determine the center of this particular hyperbola. Here we see negative 2, so the x-coordinate of the center will be positive 2. Here we see negative 1, the y-coordinate of the center will be positive 1. Now let's go ahead and plot it. So let's begin by plotting the center, which is at 2 comma 1. And then we see that a is 3. a is under y squared. So we're going to go up 3. And then we're going to go down 3. Now b is 4. b is under the x variable. So think of left and right when dealing with x. So we're going to go right 4 from the center and then left four units. Now, let's draw our rectangle. Next, let's write out or draw the asymptotes. Now let's do the same for the other one. I think I messed it up. Let's do this one more time. I know my graph is not drawn to scale. But we'll make the best of that. So now the graphing part. So we know it's going to be curved at the, the vertex. And then we need to follow the asymptote. So let's try to draw an accurate graph. So 
So that's as best as we can do for it. Now, as long as you draw a rough sketch, most teachers will give you, you know, the correct answer. But ideally, you want to follow the asymptote as you move away from the vertices. So that's the hyperbola that we can draw for this particular problem. Now we have the coordinates of the center, so now let's focus on the vertices. So for this particular type of graph where we have a, a vertical hyperbola, the vertices is going to be, the coordinates of the vertices will be h comma k plus or minus a. So h is 2, k is 1, so it's 2 comma 1 plus or minus a, which is 3. So this point here, this vertex, and that's going to have an x value of 2 and then a y value of 1 plus 3, which is 4. Now the vertex below that will have the same x value, but the y value will be 1 minus 3. So the point will be negative 2, 2 negative 2. So those are the coordinates of the vertices, 2 comma 4 and 2 negative 2. Now let's focus on finding the coordinates of the foci. So the coordinates will be h comma k plus or minus c. h is 2, k is 1, and c is 5. So the first one is going to be at 2 comma 6, which will be somewhere here. The next one will be 2, and then it's going to be 1 minus 5, which is negative 4. So I'm just going to write that here. So this one is 2 comma 6, and this will be 2 negative 4. So those are the coordinates of the foci. Now let's focus on the equations of the asymptotes. The formula that we need is y minus k is going to equal plus or minus the slope. And so we have a rise of a, a run of b. So it's going to be a over b. and then x minus h. So y minus k is going to be what we see here. That's y minus 1 is equal to plus or minus a is 3, b is 4, and then x minus h is what we see here. So x minus 2. So those are the equations of the asymptotes. Now, the last thing we need to do is find the domain and range of the graph. For a vertical hyperbola, the domain is always going to be r rule numbers. When you need to find the domain, look at the x values. Analyze it from left to right. The lowest x value will be negative infinity, and the highest x value is positive infinity. So x can be anything along this curve. This curve is continuous. There are no jumps as you go from left to right. So the domain is all row numbers. Now the range is a different story. We need to look at the y values. So view it from going from the bottom to the top. This can go all the way down to negative infinity. So the lowest y value is negative infinity. As we go up, this stops at a y value of negative two. Now between a y value of negative two and four, there is no curve. There is no hyperbola. So we're going to pick it up back at 4, and then this goes up to infinity. So the range from bottom to top is negative infinity to negative 2. Negative 2 is included because that's a vertex. So we're going to use a bracket. Union, we're going to start back up at 4 and continue to infinity. So that's how we can write the range of a hyperbola, and this is the domain for a vertical hyperbola.